My name is the Neighborhood Friendly Randy, or at least it is now thanks to some crappy movies that reverted me back to a bitter angry cynic. I review these movies with the belief that with a keen eye for details, one truth will prevail. Now I'll be the first to admit that I'm not that big of a fan of Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z. While I did keep up somewhat to date with the storyline, and I did love the show, a lot of the changes in the live action movies didn't affect me quite as much as they did the hard-boiled fans. And the same thing kind of goes with Lupin the Third. So on my journey wading through the anime and manga into live action cash cow anime adaptations, I decided that I would embark with a series that I am very familiar with, Detective Conan with today's movie, Kudo Shinchi's Written Challenge. Better known to us in the States as Case Closed, Detective Conan, written by Gosho Ayurama, is one of the most popular manga and anime series in Japan, with the manga having somewhere around 800 chapters and the number of episodes of the anime reaching upwards of 500, not including the numerous OVAs and movies. However, sadly, this show never really took off in the U.S., despite having a 50 or so episode run on Adult Swim. My guess is people were too busy complaining about the fact that it took Cowboy Bebop's spot, even though Cowboy Bebop had gone through several runs on the network already. But I'm a huge fan of the series, so much so that I own all of the North American releases of the anime, which includes five seasons of the show and six feature-length movies. So I was more than a little excited to find out that not only do they have one Detective Conan live-action movie, they have three. So I waited until I could find an all-region-coded DVD set, and I bought it. And I can say, don't bother with that shit. Let me put it to you this way. I would almost rather have a horse-piss cocktail with olives made of roofing nails than ever use the subtitles feature on this DVD set. I would almost rather go see Breaking Dawn Part 1 and 2. Actually, no, I wouldn't. Now, for the sake of this review, I'm going to try and introduce these characters by their Japanese names, but I'll frequently refer to them by their English names. And for all you purists and sticklers out there, I don't care. I like the Funimation cast, and I like the English version. If you don't like the fact that I reference them by their English names, all I can say is, I hope you do some Detective Conan-style investigating and find the guy who's pissing in your Cheerios. Our story follows Shinji Kudo, better known to English-speaking audiences as Jimmy Kudo, the brilliant high school detective. The movie starts out somewhat the same way as the anime. Our hero is being adored by the world as news crews surround him, and after a brief flashback to Inspector McGuire post nutra system, we get to see that Jimmy's wet dream bromance with Sherlock Holmes is still intact. Great Bieber's ghost. Someone get a towel. I think that woman just orgasmed herself to death. Next, we are introduced rather awkwardly to Rand Murray, Jimmy's childhood friend and love interest, as Mr. Smooth makes deductions about her underwear. You know, I don't know about you, but I would lose a lot of friends that way. Rand, better known to U.S. viewers as Rachel Moore, has always been an interesting character to me. She's affectionate and almost motherly towards Conan in the series, and the quintessential girl next door, who's feminine enough to be projected as a lady, but also tough enough to kick your ass. She's like Jimmy's Lois Lane, if Lois Lane could Chuck Norris Roundhouse kick your face into oblivion. Interrupting the scene, we have Serena, Rachel's egotistical best friend, whose only mission in life is to find a man. Yeah, that's about it for her. She's not so much a character as she is a plot device. Moving on, we cut to a scene of Rand's father, the sleeping sleuth himself, Kogoro Muri, better known to American audiences as Richard Moore. And what follows, I can only describe as one of the best character acting scenes I have ever had the pleasure of viewing.
Now, in the grand tradition of this show, I've decided to re-edit this clip so that it will haunt your dreams for all eternity. So now that we have all of our character introductions out of the way, we can focus on the plot. It's time for the class trip, and in typical Detective Conan fashion, something sinister is afoot, as Jimmy finds an odd note left on his doorstep addressed from a person with an alias that has about as much subtlety as a flow rider song. The mysterious stranger plans on kidnapping one of Jimmy's classmates aboard a ship during the class vacation, and has challenged Jimmy to not only find out who, but when and how. We interrupt our shot on camcorder home movie with a word from our sponsors, because when I think of murders and kidnappings, the first thing that comes to mind is McDonald's. It's my second Dark Knight reference. Maybe I should watch some more culturally relevant material. Not wanting to go on the trip beforehand, Jimmy decides that he must go in order to protect his classmates and to accept the challenge. While aboard the ship, we get better acquainted with all of our main suspects. The substitute teacher, the tour guide, the ship's captain, and the first mate. While on the ship, Rachel's good friend Serena is kidnapped. The police show up to work the case, and feeling a special brand of Lincoln Park emo, Jimmy is upset because the detectives won't let him assist in the investigation. Honestly, Jimmy really should feel guilty. I mean, I know it's established rather early on in the series that he's arrogant and never backs down from a challenge, but he usually doesn't endanger the lives of others in the process. You're on board a ship. That means there's only one point of entry. That means that either the kidnapper is on board the boat already, or they have to approach the boat. I know Jimmy gives some kind of excuse about not wanting the kidnapper to do something much more drastic, but couldn't you have an undercover cop on board patrolling the whole time? After getting off the phone with Inspector McGuire, sponsored by Weight Watchers, Jimmy gets a call from the kidnapper who has stated that they will kidnap another classmate at precisely 12 p.m. I should go ahead and mention this now. It is kind of weird to hear Inspector McGuire talk in this movie. I mean, being a fan of the English dub of the anime... It's kind of odd to have him have such a high-pitched voice. I mean, imagine going from this... But why did the bank president lock himself in a room during a party? ...to this? So now the chase is on, and Jimmy will have to turn up some clues from the first kidnapping. So after some investigating, Jimmy comes up with his usual clues, that the kidnapper did not come from the outside, Rather, they were on board the ship the entire time, and never left. This, of course, leads him to solidify that they are only four true suspects. We find out that they pulled the most elaborate setup out of their ass to somehow fool a boat full of people. This setup involves some kind of incendiary charge wired to a timing device. In other words, something way too complicated for normal people to pull off. Seriously, I have to wonder how this timed ignition device got on the bow of the boat without anyone noticing. Not the captain, or the crew, or the kids. Did no one go to the bow of the boat the entire time? If the weighted ignition device was placed there before they set sail, they must have been experiencing some Ray Charles levels of blindness when inspecting and preparing the vessel, not to see an elaborate time bomb. Now, you could argue that maybe they placed it there during the boat ride, but that's a bit too risky and would make you an instant suspect during the time of your absence. But to be fair, the show pulls that kind of stuff all the time. Seriously, until I watched Case Closed, I had no idea so many elaborate deaths could be planned with fishing line. So it's one of those cases where it's not very practical in reality, but it's still pretty fun to watch. So for the next setup, we have a sealed room full of Jimmy's classmates, with a firm police force employed at every entrance and exit, with three out of the four suspects being on the outside of the building. Somehow, even with this setup, 
Rachel is kidnapped, and Jimmy is desperate to find out who the culprit is, because his next message from the kidnapper says that if Jimmy doesn't find them, they will kill both Rachel and Serena with a bomb. Jimmy is now hot on the trail, and soon he finds that one of the suspects has committed suicide. After finding a suicide note, Jimmy quickly finds out who the kidnapper is and goes to confront them. So Jimmy shows up, confronts the kidnapper with his deductions, uses his amazing CG soccer skills to save the day, and we end with Rachel and Jimmy at Tropical Land with a cool little cameo by the Junior Detective League. Now I won't spoil who the kidnapper is or some of the deductions, because half of the fun of Detective Conan is figuring the case out yourself. But I will say that for such an elaborate plan, it was based around a lot of happenstance. The kidnapper had to have known every last detail and made some pretty risky guesswork, which is once again not at all practical, but at least it's accurate to the show. Kudo Shinchi's written challenge is probably about as accurate an adaptation as you can get. The core elements of the anime are all here, though I don't necessarily feel as though the girl who played Rachel, Tomoka Kurokawa, fit the character well, and it may just be how the character comes across as it's written. Her portrayal in this movie isn't terrible, but it just doesn't seem right to me. She comes across as way too girly. In the series, she seems sort of tomboyish and hates to admit she has feelings for Jimmy. But at the same time, she still has the same emotions as any other girl her age, which makes the sentimental scenes between them that much more compelling. She loves Jimmy, but just can't bring herself to admit it at first. As a matter of fact, Jimmy is the one who has the crush in the series and is going to tell her his feelings when they go to Tropical Land. It's this really sweet, semi-accurate, budding romance between two friends who aren't sure how to transition from friendship into something more. In the movie, Rachel comes across as way too clingy and love-struck, like an awkward girl who has a crush and just won't leave the poor guy alone. Yeah, it's cute when she starts writing him love poetry and sticking it in his locker, but next thing you know, she's hiding in his shower writing I would die for you on his bathroom mirror and boiling him pet bunnies for dinner. But to be fair, Jimmy doesn't help much considering that he comes off like an aloof douchebag. Shun Oguri does a pretty good job of playing Jimmy, and Takanori Janai is incredibly campy, but hilarious and fun to watch as Richard Moore. Yeah, it can get rather hammy when he's on screen, but considering he's representing a character that acts like this... A beach full of women, wait for me! Beach full of women, I can't wait to see! I think he did a pretty good job. As a standalone film, I don't really know how well it holds up. I could see how parts of it would seem kind of weird if you've never seen the show. But overall, if you like something like CSI or The Mentalist, I would say give it a shot. If you're someone like me who likes the Detective Conan series, then it's definitely worth checking out. They even use the soundtrack from the anime series, which is something that I absolutely love. Now, you can find all of the movies on YouTube for free with much better subtitles, so I can't recommend shelling out the money to buy the region-free DVD set unless you're just a stickler for owning a physical copy. If not, save yourself the time and the money and just watch it online for free. That's my review of Kudo Shinchi's Written Challenge, Neighborhood Friendly Rancher, signing out.